You'll now learn the barrel roll. We begin flying level at 5,000 feet at 400 knots. Pull back on the stick to bring your pitch between 10 and 15 degrees. Hold it there and drop it to the left a bit. This means the stick will be back into the left diagonally. Your aircraft will fly in a left helix. You'll roll right there if you drop it too much to the left. You'll enter a vertical loop if you don't drop it enough, so be careful. Roll 360 degrees. When your aircraft returns to level, center your stick and fly level. You've done it right if your bearing and speed are unchanged. It's more difficult if you focus on the stick. Be one with your aircraft. Imagine flying the helix. Left barrel roll. That's it. That's good. Nice. You're too high. That's it. Now you learn the Immelman turn. This technique allows you to turn 180 degrees without greatly changing your horizontal position. Increase engine output to 100%, lift the nose by pulling back on the stick. Watch the G display when entering the loop. Be sure to maintain four and a half to five Gs. Keep the wings level so your aircraft doesn't roll. Roll 180 degrees to the right when you're upside down and you're at zero pitch. When you've rolled 180 degrees, return the stick and fly level. Try to return it a bit early. You've successfully executed the Immelman if your bearing is the exact opposite from the start of the exercise. Max output. Begin looping but watch your G's. Pulling too many G's. Your G's are off. Get it in line. All right. That's it. Hmm, seems you have some potential. You'll now learn the split S. The split S technique, like the Immelman turn, allows you to turn 180 degrees without greatly changing your horizontal position. First, roll 180 degrees to the right. When you bank to 180 degrees and your aircraft is facing straight down, enter a loop by pulling back on the stick and raising the nose. Watch the G display when entering the loop. Be sure to maintain four and a half to five Gs. Keep the wings level so your aircraft doesn't roll. Also, adjust engine output so you don't gain too much speed. After the 180 degree loop, return the stick and fly level. Try to return it a bit early. You've executed the maneuver correctly if your bearing is the exact opposite from the start of the exercise. Don't forget that your speed increases and altitude drops as a result of this maneuver. You'll crash if you try it without enough altitude. Be careful. Right roll. Begin looping, but watch your G's.
All right. That's it. That's good. Nice. Well done. All right, good work. You'll now learn to fly in formation. While in formation, it's important to rely on your leader rather than focusing on your speed or altitude. Always be aware of your position in relation to the leader. From your POV, the leader should always appear to be the same size and at the same direction and distance. The leader is flying level, diagonally ahead at a constant speed. Increase engine output a bit at a time when distance starts to open up between you and the leader. But not too quickly. Adjust slightly and watch your leader. If you keep falling behind, increase your speed and check your distance. Repeat this process carefully. Reduce your engine output if you seem to be closing the distance. If you're already at minimum engine output, use your air brakes. Adjust your flight in half measures. In other words, adjust by half of what you think you'll need and proceed a bit at a time. Got it? Stay in formation. Don't fall behind. You're too slow. Don't fall behind. You're too slow. Don't fall behind. Line it up. You're falling out of formation. You're falling out of formation. You're falling out of formation. All right. That's it. You'll now learn how to perform a formation flight loop. Training begins at 5,000 feet, 400 knots. Enter the loop when the leader announces, loop now. On his signal, bring engine output to 100% and enter the loop without breaking formation. Once in the loop, adjust your speed carefully so as not to break away from the leader. Also, Carefully adjust your stick so that the leader always appears to be in the same position. When you start to descend at the top of the loop, be sure not to gain too much speed. Throttle the engine or use your air brakes if you have to. Fly level when your pitch hits zero. Adjust engine output, stay in formation. When performing a specified maneuver in formation flight, it's important to always predict and prepare for the leader's next move. It may be difficult at first, but continue practicing and you'll perfect this complicated maneuver. It's important to make adjustments early before you get out of formation. Keep practicing.
That's it. You're falling out of formation. 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 That's it. You'll now learn the formation right turn. Training begins at 5,000 feet, 300 knots. Enter the turn when the leader announces right turn now. On his mark, turn right without breaking formation. The aircraft you're piloting is to the left of the leader, so you'll fly more to the outside in the turn. Increase speed and adjust or you'll break formation. Your roll angle is okay if the leader's wings appear to be horizontal from your cockpit. Also be careful not to drop your altitude in the turn. Fly level after you've rolled 180 degrees. If you break from flight formation significantly, do not try to return suddenly to your original position. First, balance your posture and control your breakaway, then carefully return to your original position. You're falling out of formation. 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 That's it. You'll now learn how to land a T4. You'll be landing at a much higher speed than with the T3. Be careful. This time you'll begin by entering the final approach corridor. Perform a gentle right turn toward the runway and enter the final approach corridor. The approach corridor is indicated by a line on your radar. Follow this line carefully. 
Once you're in line, lower your landing gear and line up your speed vector with the number 17 near the edge of the runway. Don't try to align your pitch and roll together. Take them one at a time. Your speed will increase as you descend. Maintain 135 knots and apply your air brakes if you're going too fast. Keep your speed vector lined up with a number 17 at the edge of the runway. Advance to the runway area and throttle the output to 70% when within 100 foot clearance. Raise the nose gently and slowly drop your altitude. Once you've touched down, adjust your direction with the rudder pedal so you don't leave the runway. Stop by cutting engine output to minimum. Your landing is complete. Turn right and aim for the runway. That's it. You're not moving fast enough. Your pitch is off. You're not moving fast enough. Your pitch is off. All right. Not quite ready, huh? was quite a performance. This ends the basic pilot training stage. You're finally ready for real training. This means that starting today, you're training ready. In other words, you've shown great promise so far. Don't do anything to mess it up. You'll now receive combat pilot training on the T-2 supersonic jet plane. The T-2 is unlike anything you've flown before, so don't get cocky, got it? <laughs>